was leading a ride out there and um, we stopped at a corner and one of the guys overshot the corner. And yeah, kind of shouted out that he, he found some bones on the ground. It turned out there was the skull and, and the ribs and the vertebrae and everything sort of sitting behind a big log. <laughs> Yeah. You've seen the TV, you've seen, the, or you've heard the media about Ivan Milat and, and uh, all the history that, that comes with Belangelo, but to see some real, real bones out there was just a bit surreal, I think. Three years on, Detective Sergeant Tim Atwood takes me to where the bones were found. It's an eerie feeling coming to this place. As a forensic scientist, of course I'm aware of Ivan Milat and the infamous backpacker murders. Belanglo conjures up images of unspeakable horror. We're actually quite deep into the forest now, aren't we? How far from the road are we going? Uh, we have to go in about eight or nine kilometres. That's quite a long way. I can't really imagine a young girl walking all this way. No, that's highly unlikely that a young girl by herself would walk into the forest this far for any reason. Obviously this is the trail where the, the trail bike riders were. So he's actually come into to this area here to give himself some more room. About here is when he saw um, a couple of larger bones uh, from, the, from the leg. Just on this side of this fallen tree, it was a, a it was an obvious human skull. What else do we know about her in terms of her, you know, biographic information? Uh, the only other thing we know about her is uh, her height, which has been, once again, estimated between 150 and 165 centimetres tall. Forensic examination reveals that the woman was almost certainly murdered. Police don't know how. But the bones give up other information. We were able to obtain a full DNA profile that DNA profile has been run through the National DNA Database, but unfortunately, we haven't had any matches. Only one piece of clothing is found at the crime scene, a woman's T-shirt with a distinctive motif. Police release it to the public and christen the victim, Angel. We're confident that that T-shirt was worn by this girl at the time she was taken into the forest. We can only speculate who Angel was and the circumstances that led to her death. Was she a backpacker? Did she accept a lift? Did she know her killer? Was her body dumped in the forest? Or was she murdered here in Belangelo? tragic to think that all that remains of this young woman, who is the victim of a brutal murder, is an incomplete collection of bones and a t-shirt. But thankfully, forensic science has given us something else. Through state-of-the-art technology known as facial approximation, Angel now has a face. A lot of people sort of look at a skull and go, oh yes, it's a skull, it's got sort of, you know, eyes, nose, mouth, but don't see how uniquely different they really are. They are as uniquely different as every face in the room. So my skull is as, as different from your skull as our faces are. Dr Susan Hayes digitally adds muscles, skin and other features to Angel's skull to create an image of what she could have looked like. And this is Angel. This is the final result. Tim Atwood and his team go public with the image of Angel, but the leads go nowhere. We uh, just can't understand why this person hasn't been identified through our missing person files. The homicide squad have DNA with no match. They have a face with no name. Perhaps forensic psychiatry has some answers. It may very well have been a domestic homicide where someone in a dysfunctional relationship uh, ended up uh, murdering his partner. Dr Julian Parmigiani is a forensic psychiatrist. Angel may be the victim of domestic violence. She could also have lived under society's radar. In people who've engaged in antisocial behaviour from a young age, who've been in institutions, people who've become sex workers, they become 
gradually disenfranchised from their friends and family and become totally isolated so no one claims them. If the offender knows that we're covering this case this evening, do you think they'll be watching? Well, almost certainly. This is going to be at the back of their mind for the rest of their lives and it's going to get worse and worse because as they get older, they appreciate life, they appreciate relationships, they may have their own children and uh, this is just going to get louder in their conscience. Angel must be someone's daughter. There must be a family out there desperate to know what happened to her. But for now, the closest thing she has to family are the men who found her and the detective trying to give her some dignity in death. The absolute minimum, the absolute minimum that we need to do is identify this girl. Uh, when you consider the circumstances under which she must have been uh, put here, it, it really is unimaginable. You just hope that I guess somebody's not still out there wondering what's happened here. Mm -hmm. like somebody can finally bury this person and, and get some kind of closure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Our uh, goal is to identify and prosecute successfully the offender or offenders responsible for putting her here. That's our ultimate goal. And that would be very satisfying. <laughs>